dog sounds like he's I'm done. hoping you guys can't hear Brembo. All right. Welcome back, guys. This is episode three. Episode of Tuner three Talk. of Tuner Talk. Yes. Hola, everybody. Wait, are we recording? Is this yeah, live? This is, this is are live. we live? We're live. Episode three of Tuner Talk. What's this about? Um, today, we are actually going to be talking about sponsorship tips. So this mm-hmm. is a huge thing, especially if you're a big part in the car scene. And you do have a build that you uh, want sponsored. So we just thought from our experience, we'd give you some tips based on our experiences. Some insight. And I I feel like some opinions too, when it comes to that stuff, because a lot of people think that um, they're entitled to basically any type of sponsorship. But yeah, I think that's very common and a very common misconception when you come into the car scene. It's just like, yeah, you you see one person getting sponsored and you're like, oh, I could do it too. Exactly. I mean, it's possible. You can definitely do it. You just got to know how to approach it. You can't just be like, I want free stuff. I heard you're giving away things because that's, it's very common. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that. What should people not do when seeking a sponsorship? Like if they're just getting into the car scene. There was a fly. Sorry. (laughs) Just swatting. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I promise. I mean, I am, but... (laughs) A little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, what are we talking about? Cars? (laughs) Um, What not to do. What not to do? Yeah, when seeking sponsorships. Don't be... Honestly, okay, so when we were talking about this, because me and him throw ideas back and forth, Mm -hmm. one thing that popped popped up into my head, which we didn't address before, which I thought of, was girls versus guys when it comes to sponsorships. It's very different on how to approach them. Yeah, I mean, oh, that's a whole other topic. I know too. it is a whole other topic. That should be. That's a really good topic. Yeah, I know it is, but I thought of it while we were kind of bouncing ideas off, and yeah. I don't know why I didn't mention it, um, but I'm mentioning it now. Yeah. And it's it's very different from girls and guys. Like when I was going in and having SEMA interviews, you know, they told me on how not to approach it, and it's just it's really bad. Like you know, for a girl, it's like don't just show them that you're a pretty face on a car and like oh i do this because i like cars you know because then they're not going to sponsor you because you're doing it for the wrong reasons which is attention attention that's a very good point yeah um i mean of course that's that's my opinion but i do feel like a lot of girls do tend to show their face and body to kind of that's a whole nother topic we were yeah, talking about. Okay, but too. we're not going to get into that. that that's a really but good topic. Yes, yes. Yes, I 100% agree. Um, yeah, so basically what sponsors are looking for when it comes to looking for people to work with, um, it's someone that has knowledge in their product, knowledge into what they're doing, um, some sort of knowledge when it comes to marketing and what they expect from you as far as, far as like creating content. Like yeah, the, of course. The content creators. The more experience you have, the better. Yeah, but you got to start somewhere. You got to we'll get into, We'll get into that in a little bit, but... Um, I feel like you definitely should approach a sponsor with uh, with a value offer. Mm-hmm. So, of course, like making like things such as like marketing decks and and networking is very big. Oh, you're jumping the gun there. Yeah, we have I'm, topics. I'm all over the it. place. I know, I know. <laughs> so, what not to do? Um, yeah. Well, I, it's not what not to do. So, first off, it's how do I identify a valuable okay. sponsorship? That's it. Okay, we'll start there. You're right. How do you identify a good sponsor? So, for example, if you're looking for someone. How do you identify a good sponsor that's good for you? Well, so when it comes to sponsorships, I feel like it's very, it goes both ways to the point where it's very common for people to reach out to you based on your profile and how, you know, you look on social media. They like your look. So they're like, oh, this would be the perfect audience for my product to be, you know, shown off to. So I want to reach out to them and see if they can provide me with some service. And I feel like that's very common and then also you reaching out to other companies that don't know you exist and showing them hey you know i'm worth taking a shot at but um obviously you're gonna want to find something that's related to the car scene you're not want to you're not gonna want to like get a syrup sponsor i don't know why i said syrup but there's syrup on the table behind you so that's why i said Uh syrup let's let's talk about that one company that hit you up in regards to like the the okay. white okay. <laughs> teeth. Uh, oh, the teeth whitening. I yeah. thought you were talking about the paint. There's been companies that, okay. Okay, give, let's, we're going to give you guys some insights on her experiences. Yeah, on my experiences. So I actually had a company reach out to me, and it was like a teeth whitening one. Don't remember the name. Um, and it was like a little whitening pen, and they were like, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, that'd be easy for me to do, you know. Everybody, you know, likes teeth whitener, I hope, and and I, I want to try it. I want to see if it's good because I, I like white teeth. So, yeah, it was like a $20 product. And 
I just said, yeah. And they were just looking for a social media post, like a story, not a story post, sorry. Um, an actual feed post of a picture. Yeah. And I took the picture. It took me forever. I wanted it to kind of look natural. I didn't want it to look too, you yeah. know, done up or anything. And I took a photo of the pen and everybody started roasting me. Wait, should we post the picture up on the video? Oh, I don't even know if I still have it. I'll try to find it. Yeah. Um, for the, but for, for the those of you that are video. watching, yeah. yeah, you guys can check it out. <laughs> or I, I wonder if we should post it to our like actual feed so you guys could roast me on there too. It was, uh, yeah, it looked like you were putting up like a pregnancy yeah, test. And everyone, everyone was, like, was making fun of me. They're like, you're pregnant? I was like, no, yeah. it's teeth whitening. And we, were, we, we, we had only been together for like three months during that time. And everyone yeah. was just like, oh, crap. Like, Already? That, yeah. Already? <laughs> I remember that very clearly. Yeah. I didn't even comment. I was just looking at the comments and I was like, man. I know. Oh, my God. My voice did like a little, ah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, do you feel like that teeth whitening company was even for your demographic no it wasn't first it of wasn't, all yeah. i don't think anybody signed up second of all that just made me look like a sellout like i was kind of just taking anything that came to me that's also a very good but point. i genuinely did want to try it it's mm-hmm. not like like i was i did believe in the product and i genuinely liked it mm-hmm. so there's the difference i just didn't get it to get it like if you don't use teeth whitener then don't right say you're gonna do it yeah so when companies are looking for you the one thing you should look out for um is to make sure that you aren't just accepting everything you should be picky you should know your worth um and when it comes to picking companies i the more often you do it i do feel like it kind of gives you that vibe that you're kind of selling out to these companies that's what i'm saying so like when i tend to do stuff i do tend to choose companies that i believe in what they stand by um, their story, kind of what they go through, like their mission statement and stuff like that, um, and how they want to approach, you know, the car scene and how, I don't know, it, it, there's a lot of variables, but I think you should be very careful. And just because you see a sponsorship opportunity, um, it doesn't always mean you have to take it, no matter how small or big you are. Honestly, you should, you should, you really shouldn't value yourself based off of numbers either. Exactly. It's, it's based off the value. Like if you, if you have a thousand followers, but you can make really awesome YouTube videos or a really awesome unboxing you're going to beat the influencer that has a million subscribers. Well, I mean, you might not beat him in sales, but you'll produce <laughs> way better quality content for the company to maybe run ads or something online separately. So when it comes to Miguel, he's always quality over quantity. And he's just always about, yeah, but the quality of the video isn't good. I'm like, okay, I get it. That's just me. I always want to make sure that we have. It takes him like a whole day to make like one reel. <sighs> it does. <laughs> uh, but for example, this podcast, I actually wanted to upgrade all our equipment from the get-go. He wanted to buy like $600 mics. Yeah, the best ones already. I was like, we might as well do everything legit, right? Sure. Marissa sure. literally forced me to get these lavalier mics. They're like 20 bucks on Amazon. I did not And she got them. like $20 headphones in Target. They were $10 headphones. So I mean, honestly, I, I think it sounds pretty good though for starting out. I love it. Yeah. I don't know why you need fancy headphones. I mean, I get it to really like you know, tune you, in, yeah, tune, tune in. in. Yeah. But these are fine. We, we promised each job. other after episode 10 we're going to upgrade. We're basically zip tying everything right now. Yeah, everything. Yeah, what you see right now Not is Not literally kinda... zip tying, but the reference, like an analogy, like oh, kinda... temporary band-aiding yeah. it. We're walking through it. We're yes. slowly upgrading. Yes. Yeah. Zip so, ties. Zip ties. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, another example that we can give you when it comes to our personal experience, when it comes to sponsorships, is one of our... Um, we have me and Miguel both have a really good relationship with one of our sponsors, R1 Concepts. Okay, the brake company. Yeah. Okay. R1 Concepts is a brake company. They do pads, custom rotors, everything like that. Um, they didn't sponsor us to talk about them in this video. It's just a good no, idea to just, bring it up. It's just like yeah, our personal kind of like what we go through. Yeah. So yeah. we usually keep in contact with them fairly often, yeah, even sh- though shout we out to don't Grant. get. Yeah. Shout well, out to Grant. Grant is like the marketing like. Yeah. Yeah, he's like the guy. Um, there's Jack and, and Grant mm-hmm. with uh, R1 that we usually talk with. So we usually go, we go to the, the booth when they have shows and invite us to go. We go and take our cars there when when they're running. Um, <laughs> That's you. Don't even come at me. Well, all my cars were. When we went to the show well, and whatever. your car was leaking gas. And Which you, one? The DSM. Oh, the DSM. Good times. He, yeah, how to get it to at home. He had a whole show. Everybody eyes on him because they had to help him push his car <laughs> into a spot. <laughs> yeah. And then get nice. it towed home. Yeah, I was leaking E85 everywhere. Now Luckily, that's dedication. Yeah, I got it all on video too. It was great. 
That, it was a very you. stressful day, I know, for you. But Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. over here driving behind him. Oh, I see him get off the freeway. I had to loop around, try and find him. Where? What is it? Find my iPhone? You called me saying I was leaking gas on the freeway. I, yeah, I saw something leaking. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's gas. It's coming from the back. It's like, it's clear. Doesn't like, I know you don't got AC in this thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know DSM that for life. sure. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But our relationship with R1 Concepts is actually very, very good. We have really good communication. You know, they always ask us to repost um, in order to support them. And we do. And I feel like that needs to go both ways in a relationship as well. Yeah. I feel like we have a really good relationship with them. Yeah. I mean, the relationship is a big thing because mm-hmm. if, you, if you you want sponsors that you can continuously support and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Because the bigger the turnover when you have to continuously look for new sponsors just for a one-time product or a one-time thing. It's a little. It's a little more excessive. I, th- I think you should try to find companies that you could continuously work for, and with, um, with anything like new that they have, a new product that they might have or they might come out with. You're the first one to try it out. You're the first one to promote it. Um, when it comes to you know looking for companies, if you're continuously looking for new people, then you're just gonna have to keep. It's it's just more work in the long term. I feel like. Also, yeah. you know, we we did a video today yeah. earlier. And we were driving up the canyons, and the whole time I was focusing on not to die. Yeah. So. You're very scared of uh, being a passenger. I, I think it's the control factor. FYI, we're both we're both Latin Americans. Yeah. Out here in Cali, SoCal. Got to represent. You, you, my, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but for those of you that are watching, we have a California flag in the back. Miguel thought else? it would be really nice to add that feature because yeah. I mean, got to let people know that we're white. No, I'm just, just kidding. You're in I'm California, just, I'm just kidding. It was a joke. But I mean, if people are Gosh, watching from all over the world, I'm sure there are international people here too. It's like yeah, of course. And yeah. then we have the Mitsubishi Motors flag right next to me on my right hand side, and then we got some little trinkets here, little in the back. Yeah, we tools got some that you don't even use anymore. Tools that I, oh, yeah. oh okay. am I wrong? All right, <laughs> all right. She's gonna be my ass right after this. <laughs> yes, yes, I will. Considering his his garage is spotless, he doesn't know what a dirty garage looks like. Because I keep mine clean. Would no, you? it's because you don't work on it. Are you? I own Mitsubishi's. I'm always working on my cars. Okay, it's just that the does fact. Not count. It's just the fact that they haven't broken in a while. Is a different story. Yeah, because I haven't needed to help you in a while. That's why. Exactly. Okay. All right. So partial versus partial versus full sponsorships. See you Let's talk about that. Do you feel like a lot of people just expect full? Full. Full. One hundred percent. Was that you at one point? Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah. I'm just like I know my worth. So, as an example of partial and full sponsorship, this partial sponsorship example is from when. I actually signed up on an online platform for this company to become a sponsor. And they kind of evaluate basically you and see your value and, you know, give you a sponsorship depending on what you bring to the table. And they offered me like 25, 30%. Were they like one of your first sponsors? Um, it was one of the first, you know, I feel like in the car scene, a lot of people are just like, oh, I'm sponsored. I'm sponsored. Mm -hmm. But like sponsors varies. Like you can have a full sponsor, partial sponsorship. And I was just excited to get a sponsor. I forgot who my very first sponsor was. Wasn't it the radiator company? I don't know if it was. Uh. I I think it might have been. Because after that, doors just started opening, yeah. but for certain reasons, not because of my sponsorship with them. But yeah, they they sponsored me for 30%, and I was like so excited. And I just told people that I was sponsored. And it makes it seem like you're fully sponsored when you say I'm sponsored. Do you feel like it's a flex? I feel like it is a flex. Uh. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I feel like people try to say like, That's "Oh, I'm sponsored." Though. I know as a flex because it makes you. It's like you lack that being humble in a way. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I definitely. Well, in the car scene, like I feel like it's all about flexing what you got. Which is sad. That's a whole other topic yeah. too. Honestly, it's like doing building cars for the clout. Yeah. Well, that's a good idea. We'll write that down. And building cars specifically on what today's top brand names are you know what i'm saying like wheels and wheels like top like because 
when it comes to me and Miguel, we disagree and agree on things. So with the radiator company that I got a sponsorship with back then, he was like, those aren't even good radiators. Yeah, I didn't think, I mean, I don't think they're good as a company. Exactly. So, I mean, everybody has their different opinions, but like he doesn't even care about the name brand in order to have that product on their car. He's literally looking for quality, Quality, which is what you should look for. Yes, but I didn't know that. Mm. And I was just like, they're a good name. They're huge. Everybody loves them. Like, I mean, oh. I, I've done that. I've done that too. It's happened with a coilover company. With yeah. the, the first coilover company that I worked with, um, with Mike White Close back in the day, uh-huh. and that that coilover company was literally like it was like eBay, super cheap, um, kind of like low budget type of coilovers, pretty bad. Um, but I got them for free, so I was just like, let's do it. Um, and then over time, I realized that I actually want good coilovers on my car, so. Now, a uh, huge shout-out to, for example, one of my sponsors, Reaction. Um, they initially partially sponsored me with a set of coilovers for the VR4. Same and, here. And for the Eclipse. Same here. We're yeah. making moves. Yeah. I got Fortunato on my end. On um, the Evo, right? I, yeah, I ended up upgrading. And I didn't. I haven't installed them yet, but I do have them. So I will be doing a how-to install video on that. Um, so I'm excited to see how they you know the differences yeah so even till this day um i will gladly accept a partial sponsor if i do believe in the product the company yes and if it's quality which is why for example with the reaction they're based around track coilovers they're based around high quality material swift springs and all that stuff so it's something that i'm willing to actually put forward my money and still help them and help promote their product because i believe it and i stand behind it because I want to build that relationship with him. So, of course, that comes with what I was talking about relationships. I feel like building a long-term relationship and showing the company that you're actually willing to put money, even for the cost of the of the product, is only proving to them that you're actually really looking to work with them, not just trying to get free parts off of them, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's so exactly. a, com- a company can recognize that. I mean, they, they work with these people all the time, um, and they can recognize if you're just trying to, you know, get some free stuff off of them and uh, just run. So... Just be, do things right, do things the right way, you know, with your best intention and always, always make sure you come through with what your deliverables are. So that could include a YouTube post, it could include a feed post, Instagram story. Yes, make sure you're consistently, if you can't deliver it, make sure that you made that very apparent and clear when you're initially talking to your sponsor. Mm -hmm. Make sure you communicate on your end exactly what you can provide at the moment and or provide in the future and if they're okay with that time frame that's a good point because I, I feel like a lot of people don't it, it's not going to be perfect right away in a scenario of like let's say your car is at the shop getting fixed but a sponsor reached out to you and they want you to do something mm-hmm. and your car is not going to be ready for four months yeah you know and then the sponsor is like oh sorry like we're looking for something right away right but if you never communicated that to them and then they're you know bugging you like hey where's our video where's our post like when are you gonna do it and you're just like oh well my car's in the shop I just, and they can't read your mind they don't know what's exactly. going on exactly so i mean like, honestly the sponsors it's like relationships it really is yeah but i feel like sponsorships do have a bad name overall i don't know like to me sponsors is always like you don't like the term sponsors or influencers. Like I don't. I don't. Very... I don't. I don't like being called that. I just. I'm just a dude that likes to document my bills. The funny thing is, we actually went out for Cinco de Mayo. Oh my god! Yeah. And he got recognized twice in the restroom once. That was funny. Were you guys ping next to each other when you guys did? No, it was random. He's like, "Hey, aren't you making?" I'm like, "Yeah, what's up?" And he's like, "Oh, hey, I have any clips too." And then he showed me a picture of it. He's like, "It's a GSX." I'm like, "Oh, that's dope, dude. I love because he had a silver one. Of course, I love silver eclipses." Only because it's like yeah, and then we were sitting, we were heart. sitting down, and some random guy pulls up. He's like, "Hey, I recognize you." I'm like, "Hey, what's up?" And then everyone's just like giving me shit for it afterwards. It's, I, <laughs> I honestly feel offended because I know they know me. No, if they, they don't. know you, a hundred percent, they know me. Someone's cocky. <laughs> so when it comes to marketing decks, um, also bring up the energy. I feel like we're very down. We're very down because we just ate. He said, "Bring up the energy. You bring up your energy. Well, we're also Focus hungover. on your own. Energy. We're also very hungover. Ooh, I feel like. when? When did you say? Are you kidding me? We are." supposed to be good influences we don't drink <laughs> we don't drink we don't drink i actually never drink it's very rare am i then wrong what do you do for fun Miguel? i do youtube videos and i work on myself for fun yes i go to the gym that's a lie i know his whole life oh yeah i watch every second i'm just kidding what do i do then you sleep anyways um <laughs> so marketing decks 
is a proposal for who you are to sell it to a company. I actually didn't even know what a marketing deck was. Miguel introduced this whole new world and universe to me. And he actually showed me his marketing deck as mm -hmm. an example for me to kind of get my own, own ideas and put mine together. Um, and I did mine all on my own. And it's purple and it's pretty. <laughs> so a marketing deck is basically a resume or like kind of like you're talking about you're basically selling yourself exactly. in your car. So it's it's like you, when you go to a job, they're going to ask you for a resume. They're going to see if you're qualified, what you can bring to the table, all your skills, all your traits, all your experience. Insights, social media, um, anything like that. So when you reach out to a company, you kind of offer to email them your marketing deck. Mm -hmm. And it's basically like everything's already starting to one. You don't waste any time. You don't go back and forth. They don't have to research you. You save them type. And once they see that you're actually, you know, you're doing this the right way, they will actually take you more into consideration. So, so. that's when you're actually going to be very serious. So when it comes to small sponsors, they usually don't care to see a marketing deck. If they're just planning to sponsor you on just one item or if they're planning to sponsor you for the whole year. I mean, I feel like it's nice to have nonetheless. I feel like a lot of people don't even know about marketing decks when it comes to sponsorships. No, yeah, of course. But when that's what I'm saying. So like it's, it's always good to have, yeah. but know when to use it as well. Of course, yeah, yeah. If they're just like, oh, you want to, you know, show off this, I don't know, shift knob. One shift knob, one little tiny eBay shift knob. I get that. You okay. know, you're not going to use your marketing deck because right, they only right. want to give you a product. They're not going to pay you out or, you know, have you do all this stuff. And, like, it depends. So with my, with my experience in trying to get a sponsorship with Fortunato I did have to use my marketing deck and I did have to show them my demographics you know everything right. on that end in right. order to actually show them this is what I can do you know and mm -hmm. then that's when they sponsored me for the whole year so okay cool cool so how do you build a marketing deck um, so there's a lot of, not a lot, but there are some very specific things that you need to include in a marketing deck. Okay. Um, so there are pictures of you mm -hmm. and pictures of your car. Mm -hmm. um, I know that can be kind of hard when it comes to guys for some reason. Like they only, they don't want to show themselves. They yeah, just I mean, show their car. us guys don't even post each, like. That's what I'm saying. Like when Instagram. it comes to guys, they don't post their self or their photo. Like girls, they'll be like, oh, let me just go through my camera roll and pick a photo of me. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Different. I feel like you don't have to even put a picture of yourself, to be you honest. You don't have to. Yeah, just like your car. Yeah. You as a person, who you are. But I feel like it's very, like, this is me, and it shows a little yeah. bit of character when you post a photo of yourself. That's valid, yeah. Um, You have to post. You have to post. You have to include your current sponsors and make sure, like, you include the logos of your current sponsors. If you have any. You don't need to have sponsors. Remember this. If, you you got to start somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. If you do have um, right. sponsors mm -hmm. already. Social media analytics within the last 30 days is preferable. So if you're looking for sponsors, just make sure you're consistently updating it. I mean, I do 90 days. I do 30 days. A lot of the sponsors that I've worked with ask for 30 days. Mm -hmm. So that's just my experience. You could put 90 days. Make it easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just put your social media accounts, um, your reach, your demographics, um, your deliverable, so what you plan on doing for them. And, of course, you want to actually mention what you want from them. So if you're looking for a set of wheels, ask for the very specific uh, brand uh, type, uh, width, um, offsets, all that, that, all that. All that matters. Um, they have to make sure that it's in stock. They have to make sure that it's available. And they also have to make sure that it's something that it's worth their time based off your deliverables. And you could always negotiate afterwards. So... Um, and don't be scared to follow up even afterwards, after you send them your marketing deck. Some companies will honestly forget um, when it comes to sponsoring people. It's not really like a, I want to say like a big thing they're looking for exactly. So, yeah, when it comes to sponsors, I mean, a lot of companies do have like a refresh at the end of the year where they get new sponsors and include new people when it comes to brand deals and stuff. But when it, I don't know where I was going with that. It left my mind. Okay. It's gone. Also, you, I would. What I use to make marketing decks, I use Google Slides. I think that's what it's called. It's free. Uh, yeah, Google Slides. That's what I use. You can use it on the App Store. Oh, I just got a notification for Johnny Depp's tutorial on YouTube. Okay. Sorry, I just saw it. And if you want to build a marketing deck, just go ahead and use Google Slides on 
Is it free? Just like on the yeah, internet? It's yeah, yeah. Free on the internet. I don't know how to say it. On the use app Google store. Slides. That's what I use. <laughs> oh, well, I, I always forget. I just assume that everybody uses an iPhone. Yeah. And if you don't, green bubbles, you're gross. Go away. Android gang. Android gang. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> So when it comes to your marketing deck, you want to also include your current uh, schedule for meets, shows that you plan on going to. Mostly. Meets, shows, race events. If you, you could also track your car. You could also ask for sponsors. Yeah, so yeah. events that way. Um, just basically your whole yearly schedule. If and they want to They want to see how active you are and where yeah. you've previously been. I usually, well. I usually put like the bigger shows. In exactly. The so basically, like, if you've been to SEMA, they want to be able to see that on your portfolio, like, oh, wow, that's a big accomplishment, you know? Mm-hmm. And they won, what is it, Battle of the Builders or something like that, you know? Yeah. They want to be able to see all your accomplishments when it comes to uh, your marketing deck. So make sure to include that. Make sure to show yourself off in your car. You're selling yourself. So You're selling yourself. So make definitely. sure you put the best parts of it. Yeah. Um, also, a big, uh, just a quick tip. Also, if you do get sponsored in any way or form, don't sell that product. Oh, or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot Sponsors to put that take on that. You will burn that bridge immediately because they see you as someone that doesn't really much. Yeah, it doesn't really value them. And you kind of just sold, you know, their, their product off. So Yeah, that, so it just makes it seem like you're using them because they gave you that part for free and you're over here turning it around. And using it for money. Exactly. Yeah, so don't do that. Um, the car scene is very small. Companies do talk. Uh, everyone knows everyone. So if you burn one bridge... <laughs> Sneeze ASMR. <laughs> so, yeah, if you burn a bridge, you know, there, you have the potential to actually burn more bridges because of that. So you want to make sure that, you know, you always deliver. You always make sure that, you know, you do things right and you don't just let things flop everywhere and just kind of go go mayhem. So that's a very good point. You're so smart. Thank you. You're welcome. Trying to go out later? Trying to take me out. The the uncertainty is what has me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you look crazy. What? <laughs> you don't even know me. I don't know you enough. I'm a car girl. I have to be crazy. Uh, beware of car. Oh, that's a good topic. Car don't, girls. Don't even. Let's do car girls. Audacity. We should bring a guest. Who should we bring over for a car girl podcast? Who would you guys like to see? Who's or- a car girl out there that everybody knows? I don't know. We could find a couple. It's I mean, hard. there's PR Beauty. No, but I don't know if they'll come down. She's in Miami. So another thing when it comes to sponsors is it's not what you know. It's who you know. Network. Networking. Network is your net worth. Yes. Yes. Agreed. So apparently a lot of people say this and it's true and not true at the same time. I feel like if you do know a lot, it speaks for itself when you when you show up. And show out. Yeah. But um, again, it's literally all about going out there and actually doing something about it. Right. So there's specific networking events that I've been to. There's SEMA. Um, there's SEMA's associations that they have along with it. I've been to an SBN, SEMA's Business Women's Network event before. Energy. You're very... I'm sorry. I'm slouched over yeah. right now. Okay. That's why we can't do a couch. Let me fix myself. See? I'm so comfortable, man. I know. We can't do this. Okay. We, yeah, we, we changed our setup. We're getting some tables and chairs because these couches are just way too comfortable. My energy is very low. <laughs> you um, fall asleep? I know. I'm just imagining doing It's honestly podcast. been a long day. I'm kind of It tired. has been a long day. We've been sleeping all day. Well, no, we've been in the Napping. Evo all day. That, no, we haven't. We were in the Evo for like five minutes. Oh, yes, we have. We've been in the Evo all day. (laughs) He's looking at me with like these eyes like, you're messing it up. I'm sorry. Yes, it's the same day. (laughs) It was was hot. But now we're here. Yeah. So anyways, um, when it comes to networking, you just have to go to events like that, whether it's car shows, whether it's car meets, like you never know who you're going to meet. And just make sure that you're not burning bridges and that you're not being rude to people. Yeah. Like we said, the car world, the car scene is very, very small. Everybody's mm. probably knows each other in some way, shape, or form. Right. Whether it's good or bad, they probably know that person. 
Also, don't feel entitled to sponsorships. To this day, if someone doesn't want to sponsor me, I will not take it to heart. Honestly, I, I, I honestly don't even reach out as much as I should. I feel like, yeah, I feel like for the you most part, just, I just he believes in manifesting, and if it's like good for you, it'll come. Yeah, if, if it's if it's meant for you, it will come. So if a company reaches out or if they want to work with you, perfect. But for the most part, I do try to build my cars with my own money. Attract, don't chase. Attract, yes. Attract, don't chase. These are literally his mottos that he goes by. So if anybody is listening and is obsessed with Miguel DSM. Oh my God, no. You, all you have to do is listen to this podcast and you can turn into him. (laughs) You one day will be the Miguel DSM. No, but when it comes to building your car, honestly, what I would do is I would just build it, you know, based on your budget. Um, and, And if a company wants to join you, great. You don't even have a budget. Don't act like you what, have a budget. Of course I have a budget for my cars. Your budget? What? I if I if I if I had I a, have a budget. I have if I didn't have a budget, I would have a lot more cars with a lot more mods. My no, cars I, are basic. I'm saying isn't like you consistently buy car parts and cars, which is a bad idea. You know what? This is a prime example. Oh my god, here we go again. Him buying the VR4. <laughs> he knows why he's like, he's laughing because he already knows why. I love that car. <laughs> yes, I know. But he told me this is a great opportunity. I'm just gonna sell it. I actually did post it up for sale. And is it sold? No, I decided to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so then that doesn't mean that you went through with it. You just basically yeah, well, said it. Like I said, things happen. Uh, so I, I was know. actually building a Porsche back when I was interning with BZ Moto. I bought that a shell. True. And I had the VR4. I pretty much bought it to sell it for more and then buy the body kit. Yeah, basically use that money to... Yeah, to reinvest it into the into the Porsche build. But um, I ended up just selling off the Porsche and building the VR4 instead. Yeah. So everything does happen for a reason. Honestly, it's okay. Um, I did take that as a fail, honestly, not being able to build that Porsche. But hopefully one day I'll be able to build it. It's not one. a fail. It's a lesson. It's a lesson. Definitely, definitely. But um, this is a good example. When I was interning at BZ Moto... Um, it opened up a lot of doors for me when it comes to sponsorships because BZ Moto works with a lot of people like that. So he introduced me. It was like the network, right? So yeah, his exactly. network was almost my network. Mm-hmm. So a lot of companies were actually more willing to work with me because I was behind a good name. His, a good name exactly. Yeah. So after I... If you I, have a strong name like that to back you up and vouch for you, then... Yeah, it's always a plus. It's exactly. So it's like you... It's also, I mean, one of the big things back to it's who you know. Not exactly. what you know. Exactly. It's that, that's very true. Because even back then, my YouTube channel wasn't that big when I started with them. It still is until this day. But it's just crazy how things happen. Yeah. And I'm, I'm grateful for being able to enter in there. Now that I'm gone, I'm just like, I took all my learning experiences from there. And I'm applying them it now. Helps, yeah. So And I, I still keep in touch with a lot of companies that I met through them. So It's all about defining value as to you personally. Like internships. For right. him, he benefited out of it. Um, some internships you might not benefit out of it, depending right. on exactly where you're going for. But yeah. that's just an example. So if you're in the car scene, I would definitely recommend to at least try to intern maybe a couple hours a week yeah. to a company or something that you support in any way or form. Because once they see you put value towards them without even asking for money, they will either hire you, want you to work for them, or you'll learn something from them, or they will introduce you to someone. So I feel like kind of sticking to that is always very important. Like kind of just trying to find something in your when in your I niche. worked when I worked at Pepways, I had a side job. I told you. Mm-hmm. What was it? Uh, fixing cars. And besides that, what did you do? I was uh, helping tune cars. Oh yeah. I actually liked working there. It was fun. I think we went over some pretty good points though overall. Yeah, I mean, if you guys think that we missed anything, of course we're gonna probably do another video based on more experience that we gain in the future yeah more podcasts exactly yeah. so if we if we missed anything or you think that we should include anything in specific that you guys want to know um and maybe we have an answer for you definitely include it on our social media you can dm us or go on our youtube channel and comment in the video honestly any feedback as far as like topics you guys want us to talk about anything like as far as like tone of voice like i'm really tired right now i'm being honest with you (laughs) i'm very sleepy (laughs) so i apologize for my yeah this podcast podcast is very low energy not being very high this is like a mellow podcast very mellow podcast but it's very important i feel like a lot of people don't really talk about this stuff so it's kind of cool to see it from like our perspective you know yeah and i might be able to get a podcast with like a company like the marketing director there and kind of like they could give us their insights as far as to like yeah i mean it's definitely different 
from another person's point of view, yeah. like not just the person that's trying to get sponsored, but, but the, actual, the sponsor himself, the sponsor himself that authorizes mm-hmm. and declines them. Yeah. yeah. So if anything, we could head out, we could head out to the company and kind of have like a little podcast. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Kind of talk about it. Yeah. So yeah, just kind of give you guys your, give, if you guys could actually give us some feedback when it comes to like just letting us know on Instagram or commenting on the YouTube video or just kind of making sure you you leave the podcast a good review. You know, anything helps. We're trying to grow this from, you know, the ground up. So we're pretty excited because there's a lot of stuff we want to talk about. And I'm sure there's not a lot of people that even talk about this stuff. So it's nice to have someone that could just kind of, you know, yeah. put their opinions out there and then kind of just have everyone just kind of get involved. And, you know, we would love to hear your opinions. Obviously, we, you don't have to agree with us um, at any point in time. So. Uh, we, I'm proud of you. Yeah. I feel like you're doing better. In what sense? Talking wise. Like with the podcast? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I, I like the idea. I, I, like I the can concept. tell, but before you were like super stressed and you were like staring at the camera. Well, I don't I don't know how to podcast. I'm really getting podcast. used to it. I'll get better. I'll, I'll get better. You'll get better. Anyways, I uh, hope you guys liked it. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe if I don't know. I don't Can you like no. like, like a podcast? I don't know. Anyways, if you I guess. You can like it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know what we're doing. We but really don't. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're, See you on the next yeah. one. Okay. Bye. <laughs>